Okay, today we're going to extend the idea of conservation of energy from what we did before. What we did before, and we will review it, is conservation of mechanical energy. And under what circumstances is this stuff we call mechanical energy conserved? But then we're going to talk about uh, the work done by non-conservative forces. And I'm going to roughly divide them up into two categories, uh, applied forces um, and uh, anticipative forces, like friction. And we'll define what those mean. And, uh, and then we'll end up with one of the sweetest little equations you're going to get all year. It's one of my favorite equations because it just gives you so much uh, problem solving power and it's just so, so easy um, to, to write down. So uh, we'll get to that. Um, so anyway, um, let's review uh, uh, mechanical energy. So we have, so let's review. We have this stuff we called mechanical energy. And mechanical energy, by definition, was kinetic plus potential. And we had two kinds of potential. We had gravitational potential and we had uh, elastic potential energy. So it's really like three things. Kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy plus elastic potential energy. And we've just decided to call those uh, the sum of all those kinds of energy mechanical energy. And that kind of makes sense, right? A machine has got springs in it. It's moving. It's moving up and down. So there's, you know, you have uh, energy in a machine. And it's, uh, so we, we call it mechanical energy. So E equals K plus U sub G plus U sub E. And we said that kinetic energy is one half the mass times the velocity squared. U sub G is MGH. And U sub E is one half the spring constant K times the amount of stretch or compression squared, one half KX squared. So that's what we've been working with so far. Then, uh, well, we said, if and only if the only forces acting are um, springs and gravity and springs and gravity are called conservative forces. Why do we call them conservative forces? Because they conserve mechanical energy when they do work. So it's, it's kind of a circular definition, but that happens in, in life. Um, uh, if and only if the only force is acting uh, only force, I'm sorry, shouldn't say acting. The only force is doing work. Are springs and gravity. Then E initial equals E final. Then the initial mechanical energy of your system will be equal to the final mechanical energy of your system. And this will allow you to set up equations um, that allow you to solve problems. When gravity does work, if I take an object like this dry erase pen and I hold it up and I drop it, okay, uh, as gravity pulls it down, gravity is doing positive work. It's giving, uh, now the, the, the pen is get, gaining kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy gained is exactly equal to the gravitational potential energy lost. 
So if you add the two changes together, you get zero change. That is, you know, the, the, the initial equals the final amount of energy. Um, so we, and we discussed that in, in great depth uh, last time. Well, and same thing is true with springs. You know, a spring is the only force doing work. It's either, uh, it's gonna slow an object down uh, take away its kinetic energy, but when it take when you take away its kinetic energy, you're gaining the exactly s same amount of energy as elastic potential energy. So you're just transferring the energy from the kinetic energy bucket into the potential energy bucket. But when you think about the the, the amount of energy in those buckets, the total amount of energy in those buckets is constant. It doesn't change. Okay, but now let's talk about uh, situations where um, mechanical energy is not conserved. Is not conserved. Now what do we mean by conserved? We mean that like the initial energy of a system um, does not equal the final energy. Now maybe we did something where we added mechanical energy so that the final uh, mechanical energy is greater than the initial. Or maybe we took mechanical energy away so there's less. But in any case, another way of saying this is the change in mechanical energy is not equal to zero. There is a change. Well, if, a, uh, if it's a force that's doing it, we call it a non-conservative force. Non-conservative forces change mechanical energy when they do work. And of course the, the, the easiest example of a non-conservative force is an applied force. Now let's take a look at an applied force that's going to do work and change the mechanical energy of the system. Real simple. Got a flat plane here. Got a crate on wheels. And someone pulls on it with a rope. Now if I look at, this is E initial. If I look at, if I say, well, E initial is equal to K plus U sub G plus U sub E. Well, if I say, well, the initial velocity is equal to zero. Let's say this thing is at rest. We have zero plus zero plus zero. We have zero, uh, this is a real simple situation. We have zero mechanical energy. But then this, this thing does work. Some applied force, you're pulling on it with a rope. Now, what bucket is this work going to go into that, that's being done? Let's say here's delta x. Um, what is going to change as we pull this thing to the right? It's going to be kinetic energy. Do you see that because we put it on a flat plane, right, that there's no gravitational potential energy added, and there's no spring. Now, I could make this complicated and tie a spring on the other end or whatever, but I'm, I'm just going to say that as this thing does work, here's how I want you to think about it. Think of these as like little containers. And as this non-conservative uh, 
force does work. It's pouring energy into my system. It's pour, it's it's gradually increasing the amount of kinetic energy that's there. Okay. So, th in this case, the work done by this applied force added kinetic energy. That's what the work energy theorem says anyway, right? And, uh, and so now the system has energy it didn't have before. Oops. Now, let's say that it's released And it hits some really rough ground here. Even with wheels, we're going to have friction. Well, now we've got uh, a dissipative force. Dissipative, I think. Let's say this thing hits this and the wheels come off and it's just gonna, we're gonna have friction, right? And if I was to draw a free body diagram of this, I would say here's the object, here's gravity, here's the normal force, but now we've got this force of friction. We've hit a rough patch and it's friction and it's gonna bring it back to a stop. Well, dissipative forces um, take away our mechanical energy. So this thing's going to slow to a stop. So the work done by that, now let's take a look at my containers of mechanical energy. Now in this really simple example, I don't, I'm not dealing with gravitational or elastic potential energy. All the energy when it hit that rough patch was kinetic. But the dissipative force took that energy away. So that when you, as, as it slides to a stop, it's like you're taking all that energy and just getting rid of it. But here's the deal. Whether you're dealing with an applied force that can add mechanical energy to your system or a dissipative force that takes the energy away. And by the way, applied forces can take that energy away too. Applied forces can do either one. By the way, even friction can add mechanical energy to your system. Like uh, if you peel out, if you're in a dragster and it peels out and you go faster and faster and faster. Um, it will do positive work to your system. It'll increase your kinetic energy. But, um, but dissipative for like air resistance and, and that sort of thing, they, they, they take uh, the kinetic energy away. Or, the, or if you have these stored up too, they can take those energy away. But here's the deal. Um, that energy goes somewhere or that energy came from somewhere else. Let's take a look at this. If somebody is doing work, if somebody's pulling on this, they have energy and, uh, and they did work. And when they did work with the energy that they had, they poured some of their energy into the system. So even though my system, that is this crate, its energy changed, right? It, it had zero energy and now it's got all this kinetic energy. But that energy was not created. That energy was transferred from another system into that system. Energy is not created. And over here, we have a dissipative force. It's taking the energy away. Is the energy destroyed? No, it goes somewhere else. 
It goes into something else. Or destroyed. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred transferred is it one R or two R's transferred two R's okay well I'm going to do this sometimes when my handwriting is bad it's because I don't know how to spell something all right um, energy can uh, can only be transferred from one system to another Now, let's talk about dissipative forces, like, fr like uh, uh, kinetic friction is the, or air resistance or, or things like that. Or if you have a collision, you have sound is given off. That's a dissipative uh, thing. Um, I mean, if you take your hands, like the, we, we did this when we studied friction, right? You know, if you do this, I'm doing a lot of work. I mean, I'm applying a force through a distance, force through a distance force through a distance uh, on my hand. But I'm not changing the mechanical energy of my hands. I mean, my, if I, my hands are like this and I rub them like this, and at the end I go, well, my hands are at the same height. I didn't change their gravitational potential energy. There's no springs on my hand. And my hands aren't moving anymore. So I did all that work. Well, where did that energy go? That energy is transferred. Well, the palms of my hands are a little bit warmer. And what is warmth? Yeah, warmth is the vibration of molecules. Now, my hands, it's kind of a chilly day today, and my hands are kind of cold. What does that mean? That means that if you were to look at the atoms that make up my hand, they aren't vibrating as fast as I would like. Okay, the, the trillions upon trillions of atoms, they're, 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 they're doing this, they're vibrating, but they're not vibrating as fast as so I, I do this and I warm up my hands a little bit and that's because all this friction all this work I'm doing is being transferred into the random vibration of the molecules of my hand and we call that uh, that random the, the energy stored in the random vibration of molecules and atoms we call that internal energy so Okay, so, uh, whoops. Internal energy. Sometimes people call this, th uh, there might be a subtle distinction, but thermal energy. So if I've got, let's say I've got, this is like my hand, and it's probably not this nice and neat. But let's say this is a little set of atoms that make up the flesh of the, you know, my hand as I warm them up. Well, they're bonded together, right? Atoms are bonded in molecules and molecules are bonded to each other and all that. We can kind of represent that as little springs. They're not little springs. <laughs> if you get a, you know, an electron microscope and look at individual atoms, you will not see little springs connecting them. This is a fiction that I'm doing here, but just it helps us kind of imagine what's going on. And when I warm them up, these, these guys are vibrating all around. Vibrating all over the place. But they're kind of held fixed. You see, when, when they get... When, when two atoms get too close together, there's energy stored there, right? Because they want to repel each other. It's like a, it's kind of like a spring. Uh, but then when they're like medium, they're, they're moving, so they have kinetic energy, don't they? The, the little atoms, as they're moving, they have kinetic energy. Then they pull each other apart and stop, and now it's, it's potential energy again. Now it's, 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 a, it's, it's an electric force 
you know, so it's the, the energy is stored in an electric field between the atoms. But we're not going to get into that yet. I just want you to see that, okay, the energy is stored. But this, these guys are moving in all random directions. It's not very organized. It's not a very organized form of energy storage. Uh, you know, so uh, now if you can get things really, really hot, you can uh, change that thermal energy in back into, some of it you can turn back into mechanical energy, but not all of it. But by the way, but, you know, in our day-to-day -day, uh, actions, you know, as we, we go around and we do things, most of the energy that we uh, use turns into internal energy, okay? So I, I eat some food, I get some high quality chemical potential energy, then my, you know, my body's metabolism breaks it all down, turns it into sugars and whatever, and distribute it through, through the bloodstream, you distribute it throughout your body, and your body uses it. Well, what does my body do to all of it? Transfers it into the environment as thermal energy. Unless it gets stored, you know, around my gut, you know, as, as fat, which has been happening a lot lately. But still, um, this is, for most energy, this is the ultimate fate of it. Most energy, whether it's elastic potential energy, gravitational potential energy, you know, kinetic energy. Now, you might say, well, isn't this kinetic energy and, and, and elastic energy? Well, sort of, but it's all random and disorganized. I mean, if I have a baseball, here's a nice baseball. Here's all the stitches on it. How many days till op opening day? It's too long. Okay. Now, this thing's moving. You can tell by the swoosh marks I made. Okay. Now, it's moving fast. It's got kinetic energy. But do you see all these molecules are moving together? They're really well organized. They're all moving together like this. So that really highly well organized uh, energy of motion where they're all moving together and saying, you know, we call that kinetic energy. Now these guys are moving too. But they're not all moving together. They're all, it's all random, disorganized. It's a mess. So this has energy. In fact, when this baseball, you know, you know, hits somebody's nose, All right, smack, bloody mess. You're not gonna have a nose anymore. All right, <laughs> all right. All that kinetic energy turned into this. You actually warmed up his face a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Uh, you know, kinetic energy can be dissipated into the environment. Now, this brings me to the last thing today. This is one of my favorite equations. Of course, I'll tell you about, you know, my favorite equation when we get to pendulums. Oh, that's my favorite equation, but this is one of my favorite. The work done by a non-conservative force is equal to the change in mechanical energy of my system. And I, I, I think this is just a wonderful little equation. Now, uh, because you can use this to solve this equation, you can use this to start any energy problem. Because you look at the problem, you, you set it up, given, find, and solve. And then you say, look, are there any non-conservative forces doing work? What do we mean by non-conservative forces? Like applied forces or friction forces or anything like that. If there isn't, if the only force doing work is gravity or springs, you can say delta E equals zero, which means E initial equals E final. And then you set it up and work it like a conservation of mechanical energy problem. Uh, Victoria? give that to her okay all right but if you have a non-conservative force, let's say friction 
Well, you could say the work done by friction will be equal to the change in uh, mechanical energy. And so now you've got an equation you can work with to solve the problem, which we will do. So really, there's, uh, there's, there's only one new equation to add to your equation list. It's this. What does the NC stand for? Non-conservative force. The work done by a non-conservative force will result in a change in mechanical energy of your system. It's beautiful. Okay. And uh, so, uh, anyway, I think we'll leave it there. Um, and but j just remember energy is this the stuff that allows change to happen and if you um, you know if, if forces are involved or whatever you you're all you're doing is transferring the energy that's there into a different system or and stored in it maybe maybe stored in a different way maybe not but it's uh, um, it's all it's just energy in motion, changing. That's that's what life is all about. The universe. And by the way, the universe eventually, all energy will have this form of random motion, and the universe will die. <laughs> It'll be. Uh, but don't worry. We have we have trillions of years to go. So our universe is really young. So. Um, yeah. Now this is happening to me. You know, as you get older, well, you, when you get past like 25 to 30, you know, you, you start uh, entropy. So this is the process of energy turning into useless internal energy is called entropy, and it's happening right before your very eyes. All right. That is all. <laughs>